Virtual firewalls are becoming more and more popular by the day. Every network security vendor is creating a virtual edition of their hardware firewalls to cater for the ever-growing demand. Big question is, do virtual firewalls work as well as their physical counterparts? Do they perform well and do the same job as the physical firewalls do? Let's break it down together and see what we can come up with. The very first firewall was born in 1989. Ever since then, firewall technologies and techniques have evolved quite a lot. Today we have the next generation firewall in physical form and in virtual form. Every major vendor in the security industry has created a virtual firewall for different platforms. But let's track back a little bit. How do virtual firewalls actually work? A virtual firewall is a firewall appliance that will run on top of a hypervisor. When we talk about hypervisors, we can't run away from talking about the cloud. You can run a hypervisor inside your private cloud or in the public cloud. Many virtual firewalls support a wide range of hypervisors and cloud platforms. Now this gives the end user flexibility in terms of deploying the firewall in their respective environment. Now, you can't be fooled into thinking that virtual firewalls are only limited to commercial firewalls offerings. You can also get open source virtual firewalls and the list is growing quota by quota. Now let's have a look at these virtual firewalls, how they operate. Traditional hardware firewalls, as the name says, hardware firewalls, run on dedicated hardware that is tailor-made for one job. This means the components inside the hardware is optimized to run that particular software and operating system. The most notable component inside a hardware firewall is called an ASIC chip, which is designed to perform one task over and over and over. This is one advantage of hardware firewalls. On the other hand, the virtual firewalls run on top of hypervisors and will depend on the number of CPUs and the RAMs you provision for them. The more CPUs and RAM you give your firewall, the more bandwidth or traffic it will be able to handle. Now you might actually buy one virtual firewall and load it up with lots of CPU and RAM and you think you are done. But that's not actually how it works. Commercial vendor firewalls are in the business of making money. They know they can't give you one virtual firewall to cover all your needs because they will lose revenue. That's why they have licensing options for different tires. Virtual firewalls have tires. For each tire, there's a different license. For example, tire 1 is a firewall that will support a maximum of one CPU. You can only do so much with one CPU. Tire 2 will support a maximum of two CPUs and so on and so on. The goal is even if you don't buy hardware from these vendors, they still want to cash in on the software side as well. It's all about the money. But on the open source virtual files, it's a bit different. With one virtual file, you can give it as much RAM and as many CPUs as you can, and it can be able to handle more and more traffic. Virtual files are only but increasing in terms of deployment numbers. Most OTT providers don't use commercial firewalls offerings. They use open source virtual files in large quantities because they have loads and loads of CPU horsepower available in their data centers and lots of network developers to code and customize the open source files. So it will make sense to use open source files. In terms of performance, if you are running less than 10 gigs throughput, you will be fine with a virtual firewall or a physical one. But if you go higher than 10 gigs, you will need to get a hardware option to get the benefits of running on the ASIC chip. Now in general, virtual firewalls are great if you have available computing space and if you're not running huge amounts of traffic. 